So we have an opportunity to add to our numbers in both bodies, and I hope that we can because it would make it possible for a Republican governor or any other governor uh, that's uh, conservative to have a, at least a better opportunity to defend themselves against the uh, very strong Democratic legislature. So uh, that being said, uh, we do have some credible candidates for statewide office, and I would like to uh, open up a discussion for uh, the possibility of doing standouts and see who'd be willing to do it. But maybe to make you think about that for a moment, uh, since our uh, guest speaker has now arrived, um, I'd like to introduce Bill Campbell. He's the clerk, city clerk in the city of Woburn, and he's the candidate uh, for Secretary of State, an office that also has not been a Repo in Republican hands for a long while. So would you please give a warm welcome to Bill Campbell. And Bill, if you want to talk up there. Thank you all very much. As Bernie said, my name is Bill Campbell. I am the city clerk in Woburn, and I'm running for Secretary of State. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you tonight. I started this race a little bit later than others. We get into the race at the end of January. And I can't tell you how many places I've been since that time, but I'm, I'm loving it. I enjoy it. I, this is really one of the best parts is getting out. I'm able to talk to you, get your perspective on issues that affect your part of the state. And uh, so I'll be here at the end, too, if you have any questions. Um, as Bernie said, I am the city clerk in Woburn. I've been city clerk in Woburn since 1997. I'm an attorney by training. I've been an attorney in Massachusetts for 25 years. I was in private practice for 12 years before my appointment as uh, city clerk. I've served uh, on my city council for two terms back in the late 80s. I was president during the second, my second term. I left the council after two terms. I thought four years was good for a local candidate, and uh, I want to give somebody else a chance. And uh, so I guess I, I'm, a, I'm the embodiment of term limits. I believe in term limits. I also, as, pres as a city clerk in Woburn, have been active in my association. I served as president of the Massachusetts City Clerks Association for a two-year term, and I also represented Massachusetts on the it's a mouthful. It's the United States Election Assistance Commission Standards Board, and I was the local election official. There's one from every state, one local election official from every state and territory in the United States, and this came out of the Help America Vote Act of 2002, which followed the election of 2000, and the idea was to get election officials from the state and local level as well as technical experts to develop standards for voting machines, and that's what we did. I served on that board for five years, and at the end of five years, I, uh, it wasn't a term, I was just on there, but after five years, again, I thought five years was a good, long enough time to serve, and I um, left the board uh, two summers ago, June of uh, two summers ago. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm married. I've been married for 22 years. I have two children. I, my daughter turned 18 a couple of months ago. My son will turn 17 in a couple of weeks. And as I like to say, my daughter is uh, registered to vote now. She registered to vote when she turned 18. And I asked if she'd consider voting for me this fall. <laughs> she said she'll consider it. <laughs> We're getting close to election day. Uh, the Secretary of State's office, for those of you who don't know, it's a wide-ranging office. It oversees elections, the securities division. It oversees the registries of deeds, uh, the archives, public records, uh, and the corporate, corporate filings, all areas where I have experience, either as an attorney or as a city clerk. Uh, what got me into this race was in the summer of 08, there was a strong effort to have election day registration in Massachusetts. Election day registration means you go to a polling place on election day, you register to vote, and you vote. There's nothing to keep you from going to another polling place, registering to voting and voting, except one, your conscience, and two, that it's illegal. Um, that was very close to passing in the summer of 08. It did pass the Mass Senate, but it did not get through the House. It was a strong effort by clerks across Massachusetts to educate the legislature about the problems with this. One is obviously the fraud. And some people say to me, well, Bill, this, they have this in seven other states. There's not an issue in those other states. Well, in April of this year in Maine, a gentleman allegedly registered to vote in one place and then went to another community, registered to vote, and voted there as well. Now, that's still working its way through the court system, and it's still allegedly, but it, it does happen. Allegedly, it does happen, and it can happen. Julie Flynn, who's the election director up in Maine, said, yeah, we can detect this, but we can't detect it until after an election. Um, too many elections turn on a handful of votes, and for me, it's not worth the risk to have election day registration. The other issue was the, the cost of it. It would cost about a million dollars each election day for election day registration. There are 21, over 2,100 precincts in Massachusetts. 
Um, you notice when you go to the polling place, there's two people at the desk. The two people aren't there to make it convenient and faster. They're there because the system is designed believing that we cheat. So one guy's supposed to watch the other. You can't expect two people to register voters for 13 hours a day without having to get up for one reason or another, uh, to take a break, to take a lunch, or whatever. So you're probably going to need teams of two. So that's going to be four people in each one of those precincts. At the cost that you'd have to pay them for the level of activity they'd be at and the type of work they'd be doing, you do the math and it comes out to about a million dollars a day. And that's not an election cycle, that's an election day. That's a million for our primary on September 14th. That's a million for our November 2nd election. So that's really what the one issue that really motivated me to get into this campaign is that um, I'm opposed to election day registration. I think election day is for voting, not for registering to vote. Another issue that's motivated me is military ballots. We've had a, uh, we've known have a good record in Massachusetts of getting ballots to military personnel overseas and back. Uh, most states have, there's a federal act called the Federal Move Act, which requires us to mail absentee ballots out at least 45 days before an election. There's not enough time between our primary in September and the final election in November to get the absentee ballots out to our troops and back. Um, I talked to a gentleman in uh, Beverly a couple of weeks ago and he said, Bill, if you need a face for that issue, I'm it. He said, in the time I served in the uh, military, I never was able to vote except when I was home on leave. And he explained to me, I said, to, well, the solution that we had were given from the Secretary's office this past January was we mailed the ballots out by express mail. So we sent the UPS guy and the Federal Express guy all over the world with ballots. He said, Bill, that didn't do any good. What that did is got my ballot from, from Beverly for him to San Diego. But then it had to go to, on a ship, and that ship had to go to a refueling ship, and that refueling ship had to be going to his ship. Then a helicopter brings the mail pouch over. Helicopter doesn't wait for him, so he has to wait until the next time that they're going to refuel for another helicopter to pick up his ballot, get it back on the refueling ship, bring it back to the ship, get it back, and then get it to us. There's just not enough time to do that. Some people have said to me, well, Bill, there's another 10 days added on the end. Isn't that true? Well, yeah, that is true. We don't finalize our election until 10 days after the election to give overseas ballots time to get, to mm -hmm. get over. That did one thing this year, as you all know, it delayed the certification of Senator Brown as our senator. We had to wait the 10 days. But a bigger issue in that is, are we then, not, are we then treating our military ballots again as second-class citizens? Because at 9.15, when the networks declare a winner, the military ballots aren't in there. So their ballots almost become irrelevant unless it becomes a close election. Their ballots should be counted on election day just like ours are. The way to do that is to move the primary a bit earlier, sometime in August, and it costs us nothing. It's an easy solution to a big problem, and it costs us nothing. A third issue that's motivated me is uh, ID at the polls. I've conducted 34 elections, three of those being presidential elections in my going on 13 years as city clerk, and I think we need IDs at the polls. And there's a couple of reasons. One is the fraud issue. People are less likely to come in and say they're somebody else if they have to show a government-issued photo ID. And the other is the practical aspects. Some of the rooms we vote in are school gymnasiums or uh, the acoustics might not be good, the lighting might not be good. Um, and this way, if someone has that ID in front of them, they're able to match it quickly to the list, um, check off the name. If you have a father, junior, senior situation, it's going to say junior, senior, you're going to get the right person. So as opposed to tying things up, I believe it's going to actually speed the process up. So those are three issues that have really motivated me. As I said, there are other areas um, that the Secretary is involved in. One is the securities issue, the overseas um, the securities dealers. Uh, recently, there's been an issue in that division. Uh, uh, he has a reputation in the investment community of being fairly hostile, fairly rigid with them. Um, and I don't know if you read in the, uh, the Globe last week, IA Week, which is an investment advisor's uh, publication, had requested an ID. I'm guessing what they were doing is they're going to make some kind of a pitch to companies that are in the investment field, and they wanted the names and addresses so they could send out their, their pitch to say, buy this or buy that. Well, what they got in turn was an ID, uh, a, a disk containing personal identification of 139,000 investment advisors registered with the Secretary's office, including, from the reports I've read, uh, their names, their residential addresses, their social security numbers, their eye color, their hair color, their place of birth, their date of birth, all the kind of stuff that you really don't want easily accessible. From the reports, it appears that IA Week did the right thing. They packaged it back up, sent it to the secretary and said, I don't think we were supposed to get this. The concern that I have is the response of the secretary's office. Now, 
if it was me, I would have stood before this mic and said, we made a mistake, this is how we made a mistake, this is how we're going to fix it. It seems that there was a week to 10 days or more from the time the secretary got that disc back until the time that they decided to notify these 139 people that their personal data had been disclosed.